Let's take our seats upstairs. If you are not an usher, take a seat. Uh, we don't want people all over outside the compound unless you are in the security. So take your seats, take your seats. Ushers.
flesh in the sight of the Lord is the death of his sins. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on the throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He himself will guide us up to death. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Those on them, surely the people of grass. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on the throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. He himself will guide us up to death. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Good morning and welcome to St. Francis Church Curran. On behalf of the leadership of St. Francis, I'm Venerable Joyce Wanjiro Karioki, and by the grace of God, I'm the vicar of St. Francis. And uh, my big lots of work, and our prayer is we will be able to have a feeling of celebration of one boy's life. And I pray that the Lord will minister to all of us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you, we honor you, we glorify thy name because you are good, you are faithful, you are gracious. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for one boy's call to lally us here, Jehovah, to hear you, King of glory, and mighty Redeemer to celebrate who she was in our lives especially the family members, O oh God. So, mighty Redeemer, we pray that you will be with us, O oh God. That almighty and ever-living God will superintend over everything that we to do today. And anything that would exalt itself above the knowledge of God, we bring it down in Jesus' name. And declare, Jehovah, it is only you, and you only, to be worshipped. We honor you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Uh, we want to join together with the hymn, and then as we sing this, we pray and wash team. Our loves music to sing, and after we finish, we finish with the hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. Indeed, what a friend. Um, Moses.
the Lord. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort us in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We're going to get into a time of praise and worship, and I'll just ask that we all sing, even as we celebrate a beautiful life today. Amen. Trust that he is with us and that he loves us. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid
There in the ground His body Just sing that one more time. Imba hakika. of the Lord forever. We remain standing for the litany. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. 
a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Please let us be seated. I want to welcome Eugene Kanyu, who will lead us in the reading of the eulogy. Eugene Kanyu, for the reading of the eulogy. On Tuesday, the 22nd of January, 2002, Patrick Wanjuke and Judy Ongari Minor were blessed with a beautiful daughter, Annette Wamboi Kanyugo. Wamboi, as we fondly called her, was born into a family comprising of her parents and her elder brother, Eugene Kanyugo. Wamboi was the beloved daughter, to, uh, granddaughter to Lois Wamboi Wanjuke and the late Charles Wanjuke of Karafa Village, Mhoteto, Laikipia County, and lay canon Peter Minor Godfrey and Agnes Wadera Minor of Karinga Village, Muranga County. She was niece to Stephen Wanjoke, James Wanjoke, late Ju Lucy Gedenji, late Susan Wanjoke, Dr. Mudoi Wanjoke, Daniel Wanjoke, Esther Wanjoke, Miriam Wanjoke, and the late Elizabeth Wanjoko, Dr. Irungu Minor, Elias Kamoto, John Mwangi, and Masi Wangoi Minor. She was a cousin, aunt, and a friend to many. Annette started her kindergarten in 2005 at Riara Springs Academy and studied there until she finished Standard 6 in 2014. At Riara, she was an avid member of the Scouts Association. She thereafter completed her primary school education at Kianda School, where she also joined secondary school from 2016 to 2019. At Kianda, she participated in co-curricular activities including journalism, first aid, taekwondo, athletics, and swimming. Not only did she excel in her academics, but she also made wholesome and meaningful friendships that remained solid through university and to this day. After completing high school, she went ahead to pursue a Certificate of Computer Application, CCA, offered by Strathmore University, by the Strathmore University School of Computing and Engineering Sciences. In June 2020, she commenced her undergraduate studies at Strathmore Law School. During her time in the law school, Annette achieved things that proved her to be one of the most exceptional students. In her first year of law school, Annette was handpicked by one of her most distinguished lecturers to work on a as a research assistant on a project by which, by any standard, would have been above her pay grade, since she was only a year. She also successfully applied for the position of associate editor of the Strathmore Law Review in May 2021. As she served in this capacity, she actively took part in the mentoring of the up-and-coming editorial assistants and the editing of the journal's seventh volume, which is expected to be published in the next few months. She participated in the Cindy Wakio Moot Court competition in, 2021, in, in October 2021, where she emerged as a semi-finalist. Based on this success, she was selected to represent the Strathmore Law School team in the Foreign Direct Investment Moot Court Competition and the Philip C. Jessup International Law Moot Court Competition, which was scheduled for 2023 and was the largest, is the largest um, and most prestigious moot court competition in the world. As if that was not enough, 
Annette wrote and published an article titled The Proverbial Faith Without Action, that is the prosecution of conflict-related sexual violence. The launch of the Handbook on Prosecution of Conflict-Related Sexual Violence at Strathmore University, Nairobi, Kenya. In the 75th issue of the platform of April 2022. Annette had rich interpersonal relationships and her friends have described endless qualities that they loved about her. She dedicated her time and resources to supporting the Angel Center for Abandoned Children so much so that she opted, opted to spend her 18th birthday there. She always showed up for everything that was important for the people she loved. She had very positive energy around her and was the person you needed to be around for a quick pep talk. She was trusted as a great hype woman and was always expressive with her love, with her love reliably making sure everyone who mattered knew how much they meant to her. Her compassion knew no bounds. The, burden of those she loved, the burdens of those she loved and cared about were automatically her own. She went out of her way to lighten their load. Likewise, you could always count on her to be your biggest cheerleader, urging you on, sharing in your joys, and celebrating in your successes. With that in mind, it's also not to surprise that she was so often the reconciler, the peacemaker, and the binding glue in any moment that needed one. Annette was a terrific cook, as so many of us who got to sample her food can attest. Whether it was snacks like samosas, or fully fledged meals like enchiladas, her cooking was always on the mark. She loved the, show, the TV show, me, watching English hours, and sensitive people. Constantly reading books, a whole person. Her drugs, romance, self development. She could claim to appreciate Kenya and She was known to be a lover of Gengeton. I knew some that had taken the country. When it comes to dancing, it was not left. She loved going out with her friends to have a good time. Always busting moves that nobody had ever seen before. She danced on behalf of the rest of us in the family, who undoubtedly have left two, two left feet each. The night before her passing, she danced on stage to her brother's performance. The top was out. She sometimes up in the middle of the night to do her own makeup, brief selfies, and then go back to bed. She was so passionate about her makeup that during this last school break, she enrolled for an advanced, advanced certificate in makeup artistry at the Linton's Academy. At a young age, Annette gave her life to Jesus Christ. In 2011, she was baptized at the PCA St. Andrew's Church, where she was later confirmed in 2015. Those close to her knew that she was not one to follow the crowd. She desired to find her meaning and her purpose in life, her miracle. For this reason, in her early childhood, she decided to seek it out in Christ. She had an authentic relationship with God, and this was evident in her commitment to attending the Mavericks Fellowship on Wednesday evenings, as well as her, de her daily devotion and scripture reading. She was deeply loved by the people at the fellowship, who she inspired by simply being open, consistent, and genuine in her walk in Christ. Two of her, two of her favorite Bible verses were Deuteronomy 31.6, 31, uh, 31, which reads, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And the second favorite verse was Psalm 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Unfortunately, in the morning hours of Saturday, 23rd July, 2022, 
Annette transitioned to her new home with the Lord. We lost a beloved daughter, a sister, a granddaughter, a friend, and more. Heaven has gained an angel. Rest easy, girlie. Thank you, Eugene. Please let us stand and join together in the hymn when peace like a river.
is well with our souls. We can take our seat. Uh, we get to a time of listening to the tributes. And I want to start with the Strathmore Law Review. They are not. When Annette joined the Strathmore Law Review as an associate editor in her second year of law school, there was no doubt as an associate editor, she exceeded all expectations. Her analytical skills and work ethic made her a very important member of our team. Someone you could always count on to do the kind of work that you never need to change. On top of that, in her contributions, she often challenged us to consider lines of thought that most of us were unable to see. Outside of our work, Annette was also very special to us because she had wonderfully positive relationships with everyone in the team. Baby Kanugo, as we fondly referred to her, always treated everyone with respect, kindness, and appreciation. It isn't a surprise then that every one of us has some fond memory with her. In Annette, SLR did not just lose a highly competent team member, family member. It is in her honor that we intend to specially dedicate volume seven of our journal to her name. We pray that Annette rests in peace and pass our sincere condolences to her family and friends. Thank you very much. We want to and give you a message. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, praise God. Um, unfortunately, our chair is still on the way, but he'll be here with us. My name is Faith Waigua. I'm the chair of the Public Procurement Administrative Review Board. At this point, I would just want the members of the PPRA Board and PPRB Board to stand and wave. Thank you very much. Thank you. From the board, Paul Esana, our DG. We are with you during this morning period. We thank God for the life of Wamboi. We thank him for giving us Wamboi. And at least you've been able to have her for the 20 years she's been on this earth. Uh, there are many parents who are looking for children. So even as we mourn, we should thank God for her life. And we will be with you throughout. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Chair PPRB, oh, that is you, and PPLA, you are still the one. <laughs> that is okay. Um, we have those uh, who are within government and um, systems who have worked with uh, uh, Mr. Wanjoki. And want to appreciate your coming, and we thank God for you. Um, move to Wamboi's friends, Esther and Anne. Esther and Anne. Good morning. I will be reading this of Esther Oman and all so many conversations with no introductions needed. From the minute we all met, we could see Annette in each of our friends. Her conversations flowed so easily, and it was only a matter of time before we realized that regardless of whose eyes we were looking through, we were seeing the same amazing and beautiful soul. If there is anyone who could unite the whole world, it would be you, Annette Kanyugo. We all saw you in our futures, our makeup artist, graduating together, part of our wedding lineup, being the rich auntie to our children, 
going for after-work drinks, or even just walking together in class. All these were casual little things that we do and plan for, and we never thought we'd lose them until we did. One of the most amazing things Annette taught us was it doesn't take a lot to touch a life, to brighten someone's day, or to simply just bless someone. There was something about your hugs, the way you would smile at us, and the warmth in your voice when you'd say hi. You cared about people, and it was so evident in the simple gestures that were so precious to us. The enormity of your heart knew no bounds. The children's homes and fundraisers you supported have lost a member of their community, and a few homes are missing their kitukidogo, as you would call it. In 2020, Annette opted to celebrate her birthday at the Angel Center, her children's home, instead of a grand party that she could have had. And this was just the kind of person she was. She had a very big heart and she was a very kind person. Being loved by you, Annette, has transformed our understanding of love forever. You had a way with words. You made vulnerability seem so effortless and you created a safe space for all of us to open up to you. In a world where many are pretend shamed and beautifully imperfect, everyone shamed and beautifully imperfect, everyone felt like the center of attention in your presence and you felt like home to each of us. You saw us, you loved us, goodbye. And that was our hearts. Annette, you didn't only have a big heart, you also had a big personality. You were so confident, unforgettable. You had a way with people and connected with them so intimately, regardless of who they were. Your social capital was admirable. I mean, just look at the number of people here today. Best friend doesn't even begin to describe it. We were sisters. You had become a triplet to my twin and I. You are a member of all our families. We could always count on you to show up no matter the notice, the distance, or the troubles you were facing. When we were doing our attachment at Kiambu Lockhart, she would show up every day at 7 a.m. to pick me up so as to avoid the James Gishiru traffic that starts around 6.45. Her eyes were always so swollen and she would go straight to my room to take a nap as I got ready. If there's one thing Annette loved, it was a good nap. In the past week, seeing Katayini, a Suzuki Swift, in the driveway has made us all nostalgic. It has brought back the thousands of memories behind each dent and scratch, and the different ways we used to secretly fix some of them. We keep flashing back to the spontaneous adventures you'd take us on, and the times you'd go out of your way to give us a ride without a second thought. You showed up to life and made it worthwhile. We'll carry you with us for every kambay's smocha bite, every purr, every nap in the school library, every mushene session, and every <laughs> single milestone that comes after this. Our love pours out of us and breaks through space and time from all the yesterdays we'll always cherish to all the tomorrows we'll have without you. There's enough love in us to last us a lifetime. Tunakupenda bure, ekanyugo 22. Thank you very much. Anne Muregi, please come and bring a message of condolence. Anne. Thank you very much. I stand here as a friend to Judy and as a colleague where she works with us as a CFO for Africa. Members of the congregation, the family of Angel Now Annette, dearest Judy, we express our deepest sympathies. As Sefed, we were heartbroken. 
As we know, it's just three weeks back that you laid to rest your sister. Our hearts truly go out to you. We are with you in thought. We pray for courage and we pray for peace as you take the next steps one at a time. We know it will not be easy. I have a message from Nicola, who you work very closely with and is well represented by Ntabi Seng, the head of HR, who flew in this morning from South Africa. Dear Judy, your loss is an absolute shock and I think about you and your pain every day. I am and will always you are a nice and strong person. I know you will make through it through this. You have all my sympathy, respect, and support. Affectionately yours, Nicola. We stand with you, Judy, in this time of need, and we pray that our support is you solace. Eternal rest grant unto Annette, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. God bless you. Mm -hmm. uh, the person representing the cousins. Tribute. One boy, it's not easy processing all this. Mboy, it's not easy processing all this. You are a fireball, full of energy, and very generous. As cousins, we loved you. We will miss you. We will miss you cooking, your baking, and your dancing. God give us the grace to accept all this. Adjust to life without you. Gayaro kweki huru kogitadiraga. Boy, we too. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Estefanos. Estefanos. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Fernan Estefanos. I'm uh, one of Eugene's close friends, um, and I had the honor and pleasure of calling Annette my sister. Um, not many people can say that they were able to get close to their friend's sibling, um, to the point where she was closer to us at points when Eugene wasn't, um, you know, when you have those small little fights. Um, and so, you know, this for us is not a loss of our friend, it's a loss of our sister. Um, a sister who we would be always grateful and glad to see. A sister who would check up on us when we were going through tough times. A sister who would, as everyone has said, you know, make sure we were always looking on point, our best. A sister who would take care of us instead of us taking care of her. She would make sure we were properly fed. She would make sure we were always happy and laughing. She would make sure that whenever we were together that we felt loved and taken care of. And for us, that's more than we could have ever asked for. Um, so in this moment, we just want to say um, that we, we love you, Annette. We're going to miss you so much. And we pray that you will forever keep dancing and smiling with the angels. May she rest in peace. Thank you. I want to invite Anne, one of Annette's friends. Anne.
the best kind of people are the ones that come into your life and make you see sun where you once saw darkness. Such people bring a certain joy and hope into your life that never dies. Annette was one of those people, a life in a once a once-in-a-lifetime person who radiated a nearly divine light in our lives as well as the lives of countless others. Annette was wonderful, supportive, caring and kind, all wrapped in one beautiful gift. She was always a ball of energy and never failed to put a smile on everybody's face. Through thick and thin, she was always there for us with open arms. In spite of her commitments and responsibilities, she would always find a way to avail herself to be by our side. Annette created a comfortable space for us to be our true selves. She was our safe place. Her wisdom shone through the words of advice she offered. She was ambitious and hardworking, always striving to achieve her goals, displaying bravery through all the challenges she faced. happiness she paid. We could only hope to emulate even a friend than a sister or a friend. She was an experience and she touched every single one of us in more ways than we could imagine. Annette, we love you and you will forever remain in our hearts. Thank you. Um, the person representing PPLA has come. Is she here? Please come and bring the message. Good morning. Morning. I am actually not the chair of PPLA, but like we said, uh, he was on the way, and he has sent a message that uh, he's held up in traffic. He will still join us, but just in case he joins us before, after the eulogies, he has requested me to say one or two things on behalf of PPRA. My name is Commissioner Lydia Gachoya. I'm the chair of finance committee in PPRA. We have hardly known Wanjuki. We're still under probation. <laughs> and this has happened. We feel his loss because as a board, even within the four months that Wanjuki has been with us, we knew Anati. This is a girl who would call his father in the middle of meetings and the father would take the call and say, that's my daughter. We got to know that Annette was a jewel in the family of Wanjuki. So as a board, Wanjuki, we feel your loss. And we have actually given you time off to mourn your daughter. We are with you, and we are glad we've met the rest of the family, and with Eugene, we knew he has two children. Eugene will come to meet you today. And as a board of PPRA, we just pledge our support at this difficult time. Take your time to mourn your daughter. We'll see you when you're able to come back. And for Annette, the girl who always interrupted our meetings, rest mm. in peace. Thank you. Um, tribute from Wambui's mother. My Wambui, I never thought I would ever have to do this. It's harder than anything I have ever had to do. Ever since I met you, 
on that fine morning 20 years ago at 7.30 Our days have always started with each other. You coming to my room or I to yours. Sometimes you came with a request, many times to say good morning, and many times to just bring me a hug. You are my role model in many things. Your ability to forgive and not hold grudges. Many times you told me, Mom, just let it go. In these last months, I've had your voice telling me, Mom, just let it go. Your compassion was always impressive and knew no boundaries. In your heart, all are equal and deserving. By the way, if you referred to me as Mama Wamboy, just know that she had a special place for you in her heart. There are so many days that I dropped you at New Life Home Trust, home for abandoned babies on my way to work, just so you could spend time with those babies. For your 18th birthday, you requested us that all your gifts should go to Angel Center for Abandoned Children so you could spend your special day there. We all obliged and had a fantastic time with those children. Your heart was content. One boy, if compassion had a face, it would be your twin. One boy, my fashion and makeup advisor and artist. I'm not one to don much makeup. Still, when I dressed up for some functions, you looked at me and said, Mom, you look so good, but let me get you a fresh face from the wardrobe. You came with your tools of trade and transformed the look in, into something that I loved. I remember once when I bought a comfortable pair of shoes that I thought were so good, an opinion that you didn't share. And in your usual calm demeanor, you said, Mom, those shoes are so beautiful. Please keep them for your 79th birthday. You preferred to accompany me if I had to shop for clothes and shoes. You knew what was just right for me, age and all. You always said that one day you'd build me a house with a room dedicated to shoes and handbags. You were a girl of style. Whether we were packing for a trip to the beach or to the park, you were not one to be caught off guard by a photo moment. Often packing enough for yourself, and to lend something to me, as it often happened. How I wish you were still here to steal my sweaters and white shirts. Rest well, my lovely. Who will remind me to wear sunscreen? One boy, you were a hardworking and committed girl. You did not give up easily. You are an example in falling, rising up, dusting yourself, and moving on with a smile. You had clarity of purpose. Your passion for research and writing was evident, not just in writing, but in your correcting me when I posted misspelled words on my status. One boy, my selfie mate, we have taken endless selfies with you. You would still not allow me to, to take the selfie because despite your many lessons, I never learned to hold the phone right. One boy, my entertainer and concert mate. Whenever we drove together, it was a concert for two, just you and I, singing along to country music all the way to the village and back. In the house, you would hold the remote as a mic and sing your heart out. The ultimate was, was when I left you in the kitchen to make butternut soup with Auntie Wangwe, only to come back and find you holding the butternut like a microphone and belting out a tune. Needless to say, we had no soup on that day but we had a good laugh. I took you to church as your mother. In the end, you were my role model for your passion in finding God and staying connected to him. One boy, you were not a Sunday Christian. You had your online fellowship and sermons in addition to Sunday worship. You believed in the power of prayer and you believed in the power of miracles. A few days before you left us, we reminisced, you and I, how you passionately prayed for me when I was going through the interviews for my current job, and you reminded me that we must keep telling God thank you again and again for answering our prayers. I loved you, one boy. I love you, one boy. My heart hurts to no end. You are my person. I will cherish the moments we shared. There were many. 
happy ones, some not so happy. Go well, one boy. Dance with the angels. You leave me with one of your favorite verses that we've already had today, but I'll repeat it again. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Between you and I, one boy, this had a special meaning. Your loving mom. Next, we will have the tribute by Wambui's father, which has been pre-recorded, and so we will ask the sound team to put it up for us. Simply, I was with you for 20 years, six months and one day. It's hard to put down anything that is called a trip. We have written to each other thousands of chats. I saw you and you saw me. Never would I have thought who has to bid you bye-bye. The gifts of love you showered me are endless. You made my name dad known to all your friends as if I was a pal in this city. Because the day I bought you your first phone, 14 September 2013, the Saturday before the West Gate terrorist attack, I remember how we shared our worries and imagined if we were there. Since getting you that phone, you, you are every minute, every hour, every day was documented. Everything, be it pain or happiness, it was shared with me. Your experience of cramps was part of me. I walked to every chemist to look for those painkillers because you wanted me to feel it for you. If there's anything that brought joy to the two of us is how we shared every minute. Even as we sat Down and you could still count me, chat with me everything that happened in your life. Your school life was part of me, literally. How we set targets and how we could achieve them is what made that and what even me, um, I am today as a person. You questioned every action. You cheered me and you collected me. Not a single day in your life did you raise a voice you had away in my element. In your schools, you made everyone know who is your dad. Many a times, you laughed it off whenever you, your friends told you you are as tall as your dad. And you would simply say, you know, a fruit doesn't fall In our quiet moment, I would brag to you, and guess what? It is between, it is what is between our ears that mattered most, provided you use it well. And I'm great if we have used it well. That is why I can confidently say you have made me proud when I see the lives you touched. No day ever pass without telling me how you feel since I allowed you to have your phone on full time. The parting you truly made me, in your parting you truly made me part of your life. Despite being me the conservative of what I am and you definitely go along to tell me, hey guy, 
from the remote route. Please take it easy. Every occasion, holiday, you shared me with gifts, not physical, but that message that would always end, Dad, I love you. We had great plans on what your future should look like. The law degree and the power of, of going to specialize in forensics. I still remember you asking me to introduce you to the direct criminal investigation to take him through how to I would joking tell you, I hope not for a job because they will not allow us to get open for us the gate and you would laugh it off. They will look for me one day. You read widely on forensic sciences and it was to be your passion. Your warmth touched everyone. I felt safe under your watch. Anytime I looked at my phone, I was assured of either finding a missed call or a message. Whenever you could not reach me, you knew my offices very well. You knew the people who mattered in my life, and I didn't know how you ended up knowing them. I have no idea how many pages I can write about you, but text of Friday, 22nd July, 2022, at 16.10, is what I will forever remember of you. You wanted to know I am doing well. You wanted to let me know where you are. You wanted to let me know where you would be. You wanted to let me know you needed nothing. And you wanted to let me know you were at peace. How would I have loved to be there that morning? How would I would have loved to be there that morning? To see you off just as I saw you come to this world on 22nd January 2002 at 5.18 a.m. Weighing only 3.1 kilograms. But you have left weighing tons and tons of love. Fare thee well, my daughter, and beautiful shan. Your soul, indeed. Thank you. Good afternoon. I could light, I could speak thousands of words about the girl I called Boss Boss. She was born when we had a, a musician who died at a time, and that was Isa of the tune Boss Boss. And I lived every day with that name. I want to say, fare thee well. It's hard. But all said and done, if one boy woke up today and she saw you, that would be her happiness. For those who know one boy, I had her bragging rights and I will continue to have them. She was the finest person you could ever lay your hands on. Patient, forgiving, a person you could trust. person who never knew boundaries. She never pretended. And I pray God, I do not pretend this very day. That I will live on to one day see her. But I truly thank you for giving us all the comfort that we have been able to get to this minute. Thank you, Church.
Thank you. And finally, we will have Wambui's brother coming to give her tri his tribute. Mse, unataka? Aish, watch a vita. I'm just calling to tell you a story about you. Ukona bundles. That's how all our phone calls started. I'd like to say that I was four years old when mom came back home in Savannah with this katoto light skin. No one took okay. it. I was an only child until you showed up. But from that 22nd day of January 2002, I never realized that my life would never be the same. Your first two months in school, you went to a cooler day. And so on many afternoons after I came from school, I'd come to your daycare and play with you all until it was home time. The playing never stopped there. Thanks to living with our elder cousins as children, we both took WWE and SmackDown too personally with you even breaking your hand, which you did one too many times, trying to jump off the chair. We were real besties. At least that was your big, one of your biggest wishes to date, that we stay besties even in adversity. And we did. Just look at our movie, Evie. All the treasure hunts that we both used to cheat at checking out of the hotel and leaving our luggage at the reception so that we can swim a little bit more, at least until we left the hotel. Mom almost booked doctor's appointments before we left for holiday because both of us would always come back to Nairobi with blocked ears. Remember when we moved to South B and the Motura guy was stationed right outside the main gate, but since it was always locked, we could never come out. We should never have worried because your small body and ever active mind always came through. You decided to take one for the team and fit through the gate grills just to bring us Muturaya 5 Bob. You were always clear, Kinamam won't be okay with us eating that food, which meant no money from them. Again, Supergirl broke into our blue and pink piggy banks, starting with hers, of course, and we were suddenly the Mutura sponsors in the estate. You never thought of yourself alone. Whatever you had, however little, you shared. It's the only way you knew happiness. We went to the same schools all through our lives, and even when I went to a boys' school for high school, you were in the sister school. Even until last week, we were in the same university, both pursuing a path in the same course. Sometimes it brought us closer, sometimes it made us fight but it was the only way we knew how to love each other and more so be there for each other. The greatest part about this, especially when you moved to Kianda, was the drives across town every morning as mom dropped us to school. No one who wasn't in that car would even understand why a young human like you would know the lyrics to the likes of Dolly Parton, Michael Lance to Rock, and Lionel Richie, amongst so many other classics. And to this day, as mom said, when you started belting out those songs, you owned it. You are as much the main character in those performances as you are in life. I was the musician in the family, but you were the performer. You were the vibes. When you were accepted into Strathmore Law School while taking your CCA course, you called me to the university STC student center, where you were having lunch. Super excited, we sent the photo of the admission letter to dad so he could pay the school fees ASAP. In these early years, you never knew what it was, what it is you were going to do with a law degree, but you continued to put your brilliant mind to work. Once, when we had, a t when we had temporarily switched rooms because I needed a change of environment to study, you sat in the bed wondering why I was so overwhelmed and it made you wonder what you were getting into with law school. 
One of your biggest worries was that first year Kanyugo would be living in the shadow of fourth year Kanyugo. But within a year of that conversation, we were talking about how you needed to start updating your LinkedIn because you had done so much and would possibly forget the things you had accomplished. You did everything I had wanted to do and more. From your sleepless nights working and ranting about editing papers for the law review, how your lecturers would give cuts thinking you only do their unit, to always asking me to leak your marks to you before they were officially released, so that you do damage control if it's necessary. You were always determined. I had the privilege of teaching you in and out of class. And just like all your study mates and your classmates can attest, you were smart. Anything you really enjoyed, you put your all into. Starting with that constitutional law essay that surprised everyone who read it, I couldn't stop hearing, how was this written by a first year? Mind you, she was sent an email saying she did well, sent a screenshot to dad, dad sent her pesa. Mimi, I was supposed to have been an unbiased judge in the moot. And when you did it, you were excellent. You were set to represent Strathmore next year in the largest moot court competition ever, a, fit, a feat that you were super deserving of. Eventually, in light of your love for Grey's Anatomy and your law school progression, you became inclined to going into forensic investigation. You were, set to, you were all set to be that lawyer. You always found a way to make things work and work for you. You were a star. Imekatwa na imekwa kachumbari. You made the kitchen your second home, the first home being Netflix. You didn't cook every day, but when you did, we would always be in awe. One of my mem most memorable kitchen chronicles was that time boiled eggs exploded in our faces in the kitchen. Until today, it meant that you could never stand boiled eggs. When it was your day to cook, you made our plates your canvas and the kitchen your brushes. Enchiladas, cinnamon rolls, right with a dash of orange juice, everything. Whether it was an internet recipe or your own creations, all your food was magnificent. One thing wasn't enough though. Was it, one thing wasn't though, which was the mess you left in the kitchen afterwards. And say, do you really have to use all those dishes? The kitchen was another place we always broke up and made up. Onjoke, you do the dishes today. Onjoke, I took mom shopping, so you unpack. The most reliably explosive ones came when one of us, which would more often than not end with a promise to buy you another one, which would also never let me forget I owed you. You were the greatest cheerleader, supporter to me, to mom, to dad. Go Eugene, go Eugene, while I was on stage last Friday night. Not forgetting that you hated calling me Eugene. It was one joke to you, no matter what I hang up. You supported, advised, and encouraged me. In your own way, you were the sanity and sounding board everyone needed. The number of times we'd sit on mom's bed or the floor and just chapa story. All of us throwing in something there, here and there, about what we're currently doing. And you me, one joke I never liked that girlfriend of yours. It's good Muliachana. Or, see you guys get married already. I need to be the rich auntie. It's how you knew to love. Your love was so much that you wanted us to give you more people to continue loving on. You were our counsel. No surprise that you were put in the counsel's class. And then there were your escapades. And they always started with a notification. Annette wants you to follow her Uber ride. And I'd immediately call and ask, Mse, I don't know who will share their Uber ride with me anymore. You made sure to live a full 20 years, whether it was dinners, concerts, trips to coast. You were the person anyone wanted to be around. Asking me not to put my phone on silent so I open for you when you come home. You were so happy when you made friends with my close friends, who you made your sisters. Now you could just tell mom and dad, I'm going out with Jail or Fenan. And you, you knew that it meant a mission pop. You looked after me 
from both near and far. We looked after each other. We counted on each other silently. Our first video two weeks ago, video call two weeks ago when I had traveled, you never even said hello. It was, hey, your face is black and breaking out. Ulibeba SPF. You promised that when I came back, we'd find a dermatologist. Every day I went out or went to work, looking shabby, you'd stop me. You were the fashion police at home to me and mom, harassing us the same way the Strathmore fashion cops harassed you. And you knew it. You always told my friends or mom, Ebu ask him who dressed him. You would never leave us, leave us, let us leave home not looking sharp. The same way you never left unless you were the definition of glam. My entire skincare routine, if any, was your doing. Even worse, my hair care. You accepted that I always wanted dreadlocks, so you always twisted my hair whenever I asked. You reprimanded me every time I got sulfur-based hair products, even when I had no idea why it mattered. It pains that I never paid you enough. It, it was always sinakupenda. And even though you could never use that mapenzi to buy makeup or hair products, you never stopped doing it when I asked. I got into my first fight as a child protecting you, and I would do it again. Even when it came to the bad boys, you always knew that all you needed to say was when, and someone was ready to square up for you. It was how we loved each other. And then there was the dancing. Ombui, let me remind you, I can't dance. Yet whenever a new TikTok dance came out, you made sure to send me the link at midnight and say, we're doing this. And for some, I didn't have an option. But you were as patient as one can be. <laughs> Until we made it and watched it over and over again. Even when we both had COVID, you made sure that we'd still be together and that we could isolate together. You, never watch, you could never watch someone else suffer without doing something about it. Now recently, our longest bonding times always involved the shower. I, I religiously showered in your room every morning and every other night. Even when life got in between us being home much, that time was treasured. Every time I used your shower gel and shampoo, praying you don't realize, you'd attack me like you brought sniffer dogs into the bathroom, telling me, you know that shower gel is 2,000 bob. It was always either you or me shouting across the door, asking for a certain song to be played. Other times, it was me banging on the door, telling you to shut it, because you had turned that shower into a karaoke concert. But we all knew, once you and the JBL or Alexa are in there, you are our master, and we just had to sit back and wait until you were done. I still hear your voice telling me, now Simalize Majimoto, I want to shower also. I still expect to see you on the bed every time I come out of the shower. And I know I will one day. Now let me introduce you to the diva that you are. First of all, you took so many selfies and videos of everything. You are possibly, the, in, the, you are possibly in the mind of Apple any time they made upgrades to their cameras. And you never hoarded these selfies. You always sent them to us making sure we appreciate whatever you are doing, wherever you are, and whoever you are with. From the first day I got my new camera in 2021, you made sure that you'd be my muse. From the photos on your bed and in the house, to photos on every holiday we took with mom. We risked our lives in the middle of the national parks just so that we can get great photos of you in the elements. You'd get up, dress up, do your makeup, then tell mom and me, Ebu take a photo of me here. You taught me how to pose a model. You gave me angles for days. And most of all, you hyped every edit I did of you. You were my muse. You got all made up and you were always ready for paparazzi. You used to joke to us, when I die, you guys better put good photos. Msini Aibishe. True to your word, we've got so many photos, so many videos, and most of all, so many memories. And then, there was the last night with you. 
I don't have the words to describe that night, to describe the feelings, the emotions, the sheer vibes that you were. It was the first big concert you were coming to watch me play at, and you had nothing but joy. Anyone you met that night reflected the joy you radiated. I constantly think about the video of you screaming, go Eugene, go Eugene. And as if that was not enough, immediately the opportunity came. You ran onto stage and danced as I played. You had no shame, no fear, no second thoughts. You did everything you could to show how happy you were to be there, how happy you were to see me do what I love. And to this day, Omboi, I dedicate to you the lyrics of the song that you were dancing to that night, Unavioni Penda, because that's exactly how I feel. You loved me more than I could ever understand, and I can't explain it. You loved us all more than we ever deserved. You danced your last dance, and it was phenomenal. We will forever treasure it. Omboi, Omboi, you are the strongest of all of us. You took each of our troubles as your own, each of our joys as your own. Your heart knew no adversity. Your heart knew no despair. Your heart knew no giving up. You are the most peace-loving and forgiving soul that we ever experienced. You walked in light, walked in love, and walked with Christ. You found your purpose in your faith and in your beauty. You're my person. That quote drove you. And you really were. You were our person. And we were your person. As we grew older together, we never lied to each other. To mom, yes. To dad, yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But never to each other. And I won't do that now. I don't know how to go through this. I don't know who will check up on me. I don't know who will remind me to let go of a fight only you knew I wouldn't win. I don't know who the rich auntie to my kids will be. And I don't know whose Uber I'll be tracking or who's going to ask me, mom, and dad for money. I don't know who will cook your meals, meals, but I'll learn. Your songs, I'll sing. The TikToks, I'll learn. The arbitration course that we were doing last week, I will finish. Anything you started, I will do everything in my power to finish. But most of all, I'll stay strong for mom and dad. If there's one thing you'd have wanted most, is that someone takes care of them in your absence, and as you did in your presence. I just have one request, my last wish. Please rest easy and promise to watch over us. Make your radiant smile and your also beautiful heart keep us. It's the only way we'll survive this. You're my person, you're our person, and you'll always be. Dance with the angels, girly. Purr. Thank you all for sharing your <coughs> condolences and the tributes. May the Lord grant you grace and comfort, and may he cause the cherished memories to abide in your hearts and in your minds. We have one of our clergy from Muranga Diocese, and would want to invite him to come and give his tribute uh, at this moment. Karibu sana, Reverend. Good afternoon. Praise God. Uh, Venerable Joyce and uh, your assistants, the family members of I'm Reverend Anthony Galajumongi, by the grace of God. I serve in the Diocese of Muranga South, 
in Kangali Palace and also Kangali Dinali. We have come with a number of us, wherever you are, can you rise? Just stand. While what we talk about. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you can have your seat. Venerable, allow me first to bring the message of condolence from our Lord Bishop, Bishop Julius Carano, whom when these incidents happened, I informed him about the damage of our daughter. He is still doing prayers for the family and he wishes family well. When I first met one boy, we were with my Lord Bishop, and something which I noted from our dear daughter is that she was very courageous. Because the moment we were with Bishop, she did a lot of work serving Bishop. Then I realized something else, that uh, she was a person who needed to know much. And that I prefer to bring my message of condolence, quoting a scripture. When Job was given various information, some of them were challenging. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Praise be to God. So, my message this afternoon to the family, start farm, God is in control, he will live and he will continue to serve you. May God bless you and we wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend. We would want now to move to the ministry of God's word. And uh, I would want to invite those who will be doing the readings, Adrian Wambua and Gabriel Murungi, to join me up here. As I invite all of us to stand and we join together in the hymn. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters along the right paths for his name's sake. 
Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Please let us be seated for the first reading. Deuteronomy 31, verse 1 to 8. Then Moses went out and spoke his words to all Israel. I am now 120 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sarn and Oj, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you. God goes with you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him, in the presence of Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with these people into the land that the Lord swore to the ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among the, uh, as the inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and be, will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I will be reading from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8 to 20. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its furthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war, the Holy One of Israel. See, I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them, and reduce the hills to chaff. You will winnow them, and wind will pick them up, and a gale will blow, will blow them away. But you will rejoice in the Lord, and the glory in the Holy One of Israel answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will make rivers flow on barren heights and, and the parched ground into springs. I will put in the desert the cedar and the acacia and the myrtle of, and the olive. I will set junipers in the wastelands and fir and the cypress together so that, the, so that people may see and know, may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, thank you, readers, for that uh, wonderful reading. I want to bring a message of condolence uh, to Wamboi's parents uh, for the loss of Wamboi. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are in your presence. This season, how will you yourself to us? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Again, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All of us who are here today, and I want to tell you we are many. The church is packed down and up, and this is a big church. That's a message of who one boy was. We have come here and we are gathered here this morning to celebrate a beautiful soul. We have heard so much about Wamboi from her family members and from her friends 
and from her colleagues. And those who had an encounter with her in one way or the other, she was friendly. She made friends, that means she was outgoing. Wamboi, yes, we are saying she lived 20 years. But from what she cared about people and she celebrated her life with others. And especially outgoing, to go and celebrate birthdays with those who were disadvantaged. What a She was indeed born again. She read her psalm of, to tell you the truth, I have no answer. But as we come, we come so that we can be reminded that there is one who is greater than us and the one who is all-knowing and his name is God Almighty. And so what we don't know and what we don't even understand, we can trust him because he knows and he understands. And from the word of God and the passages that we have read, and we have read, is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. There is a season and a time to be born, and that is the work that God gave Waboy, and Waboy did it so well, diligently, including her work in school. A death like this one of a sweet soul, a great soul, a path of us. In the book of Escria, season chapter one, is vanity. And he continues to say, what does it profit a man of all his labor, at which he tolls under the sun? Generations come and all on. It doesn't make sense. There's this and there's the other things that chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. This is the picture that King Solomon, who had achieved so much, painted for us. When all of it is said and done, achievements are good and everything else. All those works that we do are good. Everything else that God has provided for us is good. And it is good to perform well, it's good to do things. What is that? What is that? Solomon again reminds us what is it that we need to do. And I thank God for one boy, greatest. And the greatest of them all is what King Solomon says in the book of Ascriasis in chapter 12. And reading from verse 13. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Hear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. What does that remind us? That everything we do in word or deed should bring glory unto God. And one boy knew that, and that is why she always made references to the word of God. That is why one boy went out of her way to do what was right in the sight of God, sacrificing herself and through many of her friends. That today they stand here and talk of the impact that one boy had in their lives. Not of because of who she was, it's because of who God has made one boy to be. And why is that? It's because one boy had a relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One boy had the fear of God. And so today, even as one boy lies here in death, we know that one boy has slept with the angels. One boy has slept with the Lord. And one boy will live as meladiated that light in her parents' life, in her brother's life, in her friend's life. I pray that in Jesus' name, we who are here today and we have a chance in this life, we will light somebody else's candle 
we will give somebody else hope. The Bible reminds us in the book of Matthew that we should let our light sh shine wherever she was and with whoever she was with. So it didn't matter. But she made a difference. We have just heard from the minister who has come from Moranga, the high and car, his encounters who Wambo yes. And as I said and the other night I said, write your story and write it well, so that those ones who come on your final day, they will not struggle with words. They will not be asking, what am I going to say? Or what is this that the person did? I pray that one lesson we learn from one boy is write your story and write it well because one day it will come to an end because there's a season and a time for everything and then exiting this world. Yes, one boy has exited the world and one boy, as we have been told, she has joined the heavenly choir and I'm sure she is leading worship there. And as she joins the heavenly choir, she also has left a mark in this world. Would you leave a mark in the world? Would you? But the least we can do is to make sure that we leave a mark. That we who served God in everything that she did. Words. What boy would want you to keep in heart? This, these are the words. Because one boy is, life must go on. Yes, she's gone physically, but spiritually she is, and she's going to journey with you. But keep one boy's candle shining. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. The Lord will go before you. The Lord will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord will be with you. He will indeed strengthen you and help you. Those areas that one boy was there and helping the Lord will come through for you. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. So you are not alone. You and God cares about your well-being. And surely you will be able to give a testimony that goodness and mercy will follow you all the days and has followed us all the days of our lives. That is what one boy would love to see in your family. One boy, you did it all. Sweet girl, you are loved by them who are close to you and who held you when you came into this world. But the creator God who brought you beautiful flower into this world has decided to take you back to be with him. And so for us who are gathered here today, what do we say? Sleep well, beautiful soul. Till we meet again when the Lord is called a pure, when the Lord is called a pure, when the Lord is called a pure, when the Lord is called a pure. I'll be sing like you mean it. Let us encourage one another. Sing like you mean it. Bogua. When the Lord is 
called a pure when the roll is called a pure when the roll is called a pure when the roll is called a pure I'll be there that reminds us we will meet again. We will meet again. Yes, we will. It is certain we will meet again. And for us who know God, may you know him. Because moment and time and season is coming when we will meet face to face. But only to those who know God and who have released their lives to God like one boy did. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to, in Jesus' name, you continue to shine your light among us, O Jehovah, that even as we exit this celebration, we will desire to know you better. We will desire to walk with you. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We, want, we have gotten to a time of um, offering. Uh, we want to stand and join together the hymn, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Waboi love children, and so the offering that we are going to have today is going towards that cause. And so. <laughs>
in Jesus' name, we thank you for this gift that your people have given for the furtherance of the cause of your daughter that you have taken home, the love of children. Gracious God, we pray that your love will continue to radiate in our hearts, O oh God, even as we remember our boy. I'm going to come and set out the casket as we do the final prayer. such as this, why else can we go but to you, O King of Glory? Jehovah, you are the one who gave this family this beautiful flower, one for your net to be And God, it is you who has taken her home. And Lord, because of the pain of the the family is before you, O God. Therefore, Lord, we pray that you comfort them that you encourage them, O Jehovah. That you order their steps, O God. That even in moments that they will miss her cause, they will miss her visitations, O God. Jehovah, they will miss her fun, King of glory. I pray that in Jesus' name, your presence will be with them, O Jehovah. I pray that, King of glory, you will continue Visit them, Jehovah God. You will continue to hold them, Jehovah, together. So ever live in God, without you, they can make it. But with you on their side, they will make it. And with you on their side, they will say that we have seen the faithfulness of God. And Lord Almighty, I pray that you give them the the only place that is sufficient this time. God Almighty, it's a life they have achieved. I started today without a lot of God, I pray that you minister to them in every but don't allow them to be overwhelmed by grief. Be there Hearts of comfort in the arms. And to your hands we surrender them, O God. Hold them to your right hand. More than you are done, I do I have work with you for two guys. So, God, you are a little cock, put you in your head. I have a little bit of a problem. Adaniya 
kwa 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 Karena of the earth so to us we shall return as you ordained when you created us saying dust you are and to go down to the dust weeping at the grave we make a song rest in peace oh boy. amen we have come to the end of our service. Can I pay a vote of thanks to come? Good afternoon. My name is Mark Limina. I've known Patrick for 24 years at Judy. And I would like to give both thanks on behalf of First, we would like to give thanks to Almighty God, to the Lord. SEK Church, St. Francis, Vika, Reverend Joyce Karaoke. Thank you, thank you, with the Kranji team. On the behalf of Patrick and Judy, our parents, our families, friends who have not left us outside since the festival Saturday morning, we say thank you, thank you for being with us and working with us and encouraging us and giving us words of encouragement. Also, Pedro, thank you. All the better class of 96, 1990. University of School to our best friends and our joking friends from the University of School Rasco Sadbosco Ariara schools among others. We thank you. Thank you for holding and holding one book in the past that has been and most work colleagues where Judy works, uh, Safir, Noche Kenya, and Glasgow Smith Klein. We say thank you, thank you very much. Uh, the board, the management staff, the public procurement regulatory authority, PPRA, you both. We are so grateful. And thank you for moment. To the other institutions, the Kenya Airport Authority, NTCA, Kenya Revenue Authority, Coca-Cola, Commonwealth Development Corporation, and Dr. Agam 
I met Patrick in 1998 to the numerous communities of Pitrain, Karinga Massive. This is uh, from Moraga School Community Student. We say thank you, thank you very much. Professional groups represent the of all head of government club, IT management, and keep the environment for life. Thank you, thank you for molding to our job that he is today. To the church communities, where he goes, Packard's Baptist Church, and SCK Card. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Everyone we have missed, uh, with respect, we say thank you for working with us, of your kind of compassion. We are so grateful, and we can't thank you enough. Please accept our deepest thank you to all of you. Once again, uh, to the fellowship team, thank you, thank you all. I think over here, right? Uh, those are the songs. Thank you. To the ushers, we also uh, give thanks. To the refill for home and all the service providers, we don't forget you. We say thank you, thank you very much. To the security teams outside, we feel we say thank you too. Thank you very much. God bless you all. The end of our service. And, um, the thing that I uh, this is uh, a private intent, so it's only the family and the clergy are going. So that us, thank you that you came and uh, you take the love of God back to where you are going. And we a few minutes out there as to say hello to the members of the family and then we head on to Komito. So please thank you that you came and allowed me to finish off. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, as we get out, uh, the casket, the family, the clergy, we use the
Excuse me. Excuse me. You are in the shot, sorry. Anyone, anyone, I'll get a bag. Tumiacha bag, Zimbo. Beba camera. Bebe, itatumia tu imoja. Okay. 